Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Calliope cover-up. The Calliope features an open work stitch, a v-neck, and a tie at the waist. Let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, I am using Lion Brands 24-7 cotton in the color Camel. This is a weight 4 yarn, and it is perfect for any kind of summer accessory or garment. We'll also be using a size G, four and a half millimeter crochet hook throughout this entire tutorial. As always, you can follow along with the written pattern, which you can find links to in the description below. This cover up is made in two panels working from the bottom up for both, and we'll need a multiple of five stitches plus two. So make sure that you are following along with the size that you need to make, but we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and then we're going to chain the amount of stitches that we need for our size. So I'm going to go ahead and make a chain of 117 and then add two more stitches for our turning chain. So I'm going to make a total of 119 chains for size 2X. So for row one of our back panel, we will work a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Now those chains that we skip are going to count as our first double crochet, and now we've worked our second double crochet. Then we'll get into the pattern repeat for this row. So we're going to chain three, skip three chains, and then work to double crochet. So there's one and then two. So one double crochet into each of the next two chains. And we're just going to repeat this all the way across. So again, we chain three, skip three, and then work two double crochet. So just continue to work that repeat all the way across your row until you have no more chains left. So here we're working our last two double crochet of row one. And here's what row one will look like. Now we're ready to move on to row two, which will start with a chain three. This counts as our first stitch. We'll turn our work. And now we're going to work five double crochet into each chain three space all the way across. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So we're not going to work into any of the previous double crochets. We're only going to be working into the chain three spaces until we get to the very end of our row. So just continue to work five double crochet stitches into each chain three space across for row two. Okay, so we've worked our last set of five double crochets and now we just wanna work one double crochet into the top of the chain three space from the row below, or sorry, the top of the chain three of the row below. And that completes row two. Now we'll start row three by working a chain three, which counts as our first stitch. We'll turn our work. And now we are going to work a double crochet into the first stitch, or I guess the first double crochet. Chain three, skip three, and then we'll work double crochet two. So one double crochet into each of the next two. So you'll see that those five double crochet, they're almost like a shell stitch. You're going to be working into the first and last of those shell stitches for row three. So just continue to chain three, skip three, and then work double crochet two all the way across your row. So once we get to the end, and we've worked into that last shell. We're going to chain three, 
skip three, we'll work one double crochet into that last double crochet stitch and one double crochet into the top of the chain three. And that's the end of row three. And now we're just going to be repeating rows two and three all the way up for the indicated number of rows for your size. So again, the next row, it's a row two repeat, we'll be working five double crochet into those chain three spaces. And you just continue to repeat rows two and three just for the back panel. It's just one solid rectangle, nice and easy, and it works up very quickly. So depending on what size you are making, you will either end with 54 rows or 56 rows, but you will be ending on a row to repeat. So go ahead and work up the rest of your back panel, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll show, I'll show you how to work up the front. Okay, so we finished the back panel and I've done the bottom section of the front panel, which has worked exactly the same as the back panel, same amount of chains, stitches, everything, but we're just gonna work the same as the back panel through row 42. Then what you wanna do is you wanna find your center set of five double crochets. So you can count up how many of those sets of five that you have all the way across. You want to find the very one in the center, and then you want to take a locking stitch marker and place that into the center double crochet of that little shell stitch. So I'll show you where I'm putting mine. I'm counting over my sets of five until I get to my center one, and then I'm going to put my locking stitch marker into that middle double crochet. So we're just basically finding the center of our cover up, and this will help us to determine where to start and stop for the front right and the front left part of our cover up so that we get that nice V neck shape. So once we have our stitch marker in place, we can go ahead and get our hook back in and we're starting with the front right side of our piece, which is, when I say right, I mean right when you are wearing it. We're going to chain three and turn, and this will be row, row one of the right side on the front. So again, same as we've been doing before, we'll double crochet into that first stitch, and then we're going to chain three, skip three, and then work two double crochets. And we're going to do that until we have three stitches before our stitch marker. So make sure that you are following along with the written pattern in case you're getting confused on this section. But this is basically a row three repeat, but we're gonna be stopping a few stitches short right in that center area of our cover up. So here's our stitch marker. We'll stop three stitches before we hit the marker. So go ahead and finish working up your first row of your front right side. And then I'll meet you back here for the rest. Okay, so we have our chain three, we're skipping three, and then we will have three stitches left before the marker. So I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And now to end the row, we're going to double crochet two stitches together. So we've decreased one and we've stopped at that middle section. Now for row two of the front right side, we're gonna chain three and turn. Again, our chain three is still going to count as a stitch. And now we wanna remove one more stitch. So typically we would work five double crochet into each chain three space, but for this first chain three space, we're only going to double crochet four. So that's where we're getting our decreased stitch. So work four double crochet into the first chain three space. Then same as we've always done for row two of our repeat, we're going to work five double crochet into each of the next chain three spaces 
and then work one double crochet into the top of the chain three to finish. Okay, so moving on to row three of the front right side, we'll chain three and turn. And here you can start to see our V-neck taking shape. So we just finished off, you can kind of see the slant here. Um, and we're going to be stopping um, just before this last set of four from the previous row. But we'll work this row the same as we have been by working a double crochet into the first stitch, chain three, skip three, and then two double crochet. And we'll do this all the way across until we have four stitches remaining. And remember that that chain three at the beginning counts as a stitch. So count that in your four stitches. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two, skip two, and then work a double crochet two together over the last full double crochet and that chain three from the row below. And that will finish up row three. Okay, and now we're ready to start row four. We're gonna chain three and turn. Okay, so to start this row, we're gonna be starting by working two double crochet into that chain two space. And then as normal, we're just going to work five double crochet into each chain three space across, ending with one double crochet into the top of the chain three from the row below. Okay, so we're just finishing up row four. Again, we're gonna work that last double crochet into the top of the chain three. Then for row five, we're gonna chain three and turn. And then same as before, we'll double crochet into that first stitch. chain three, skip three, and then work double crochet for two. And we're going to repeat that all the way across until we have two stitches remaining. Okay, so we're getting to the end here. And the two stitches that will remain is one double crochet and the chain three. So we're going to double crochet those two stitches together. Same as we did the previous time we did this row. Or this repeat of this row, I should say. And then just be careful because sometimes it can be tricky to get into the top of that chain three. Um, but make sure that you are counting that always as a stitch. All right, so you can really see our V-neck taking shape now. For row six, we'll chain three and turn. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be kind of skipping over a stitch and that's where our decrease will be. So we're just going to immediately start working into those chains, chain three spaces by doing what we normally do, which is working five double crochet into each chain three space across and then ending with a double crochet into the top of the chain three. So just continue working that all the way across. This is a pretty normal row or repeat. So finish up this row, row six, and then for row seven, you'll start it exactly the same, chain three, skip three, two double crochet, until you have two stitches remaining, and then we'll double crochet those two stitches together. So here I am at the end of row seven and I'm gonna skip three and then I have two remaining stitches, one of which is the chain three. So I'm just going to work my double crochet two together right here. And now what we wanna do is we want to repeat rows two through eight. No, sorry, two through six. <laughs> is what we will repeat. So we're gonna be continuing to do those decreases along the neckline just as normal. Um, so just go ahead and repeat those rows 
and I'll meet you back here for the rest. Okay, so I finished all of my decreases, and depending on what size you're making, you will have either stop right here or you will have two more just straight rows like we normally do. Um, so for the larger sizes, you're going to be adding a set of two, but you're always going to be ending with that row two repeat. So since I'm making the two X, I need to add two more rows to mine just in the normal pattern stitch. And then we'll go ahead and start on the left hand side by joining our yarn where that stitch marker is. Okay, so now that our right side is done, what we wanna do is flip our piece over so that we are on the same side that we started the right side with when we start the left side. Since we started with that row one repeat, we wanna continue that on from the stitch right after our stitch marker. So that's the stitch that we want to join our yarn and start row one of the left side of the front panel. So I'm gonna join my yarn and then chain three to start. That will count as a stitch. And now I'm going to double crochet two stitches together and that's going to kind of act as my normal second stitch that I would make. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing that we did on the right side just at the beginning of the row or the end of the row depending on what row we're on um so it'll be very similar but slightly different so we're going to double crochet two together okay and now we can go right into our normal repeats we're going to chain three and here you'll kind of see that the V is going to start forming since we're making the other side of the V now. So chain three, skip three, and then double crochet two. And then repeat that all the way across. So chain three, skip three, double crochet two, all the way across, and then finishing with a double crochet two at the end of the row and that last double crochet again will go into the chain three okay so here's our last double crochet of row one of the left side gotta make sure I get into the top of that chain three okay and then for row two, we're going to chain three and turn. And we're going to be working as normal until we get to that last chain three space. So in the first one, we're going to double crochet five. And in each of the rest of the chain three spaces, we'll do five double crochet until that very last chain three space. So now we're getting to the last chain three space and instead of working five double crochet, we're going to just double crochet four into that last one. So that's how we are eliminating one of those stitches. And then we'll work our final double crochet into the top of the chain three of the row below. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to row three, and this time we're gonna do things a little differently with this side. Normally we would chain three and turn, but we're actually going to be chaining five total, and it's going to count as our chain three, our first stitch, plus our chain two space. So eventually we will be working into the third chain there to finish. Um, so it might look a little funny when you first work this row, but with the next row, it'll work itself out. So we chain five and turn, and now we skip three, and we're going to work a double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then work as normal. So again, this chain five will become our first stitch with the chain threes, and then the two chains as our chain space. So now we can chain three, skip three, and then work 
two double crochets. And we'll just repeat that all the way across our row. Okay, so there's our last double crochet. And now for the next row, we're going to chain three and turn. And we will be working the same as we normally do again until we hit that last chain space. So in each of the chain three spaces, we want to work five double crochet just as we normally would. And when you get to that last chain two space, which is attached to our chain three at the beginning, that like big loop we'll have from the beginning of the last row, we'll stop there and I'll show you what to do after we get to that point. Okay, so we're almost to that last chain space. So for our chain two space right here, we want to work two double crochet into the chain space. So that was one, and here's two. And then we wanna work one double crochet into that third chain up, so the top of the chain three. So make sure you're counting from the bottom and work your last double crochet into that third chain. Okay, and that will complete our row. Now for the next row, we want to, again, chain three. And turn. Okay, and then what we wanna do is we are going to skip over this first double crochet here. Um, and then instead we're gonna start our two double crochet stitch crochet stitches um, right into that second stitch and then the first stitch of the last set of five. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll see what I'm doing here. So one double crochet after the skipped one and then one double crochet into the first of the set of five. Then we can work the row as we normally would by chaining three, skipping three stitches, and then working two double crochets. And we'll just repeat that all the way across the row as normal. Okay, so we've reached the end of row five. Working that last double crochet into the chain three. And now our next row is a row six and we're actually gonna work this row just as we normally would. So chain three and turn and then we want to work five double crochet into each of the chain three spaces all the way across. Okay, so we're working that last set of double, five double crochets. And then we will kind of skip over these stitches here and work our last double crochet into the top of the chain three from the row below. Okay, so now we've reached row seven, um, which is kind of a repeat of row one, but it's gonna be slightly different. We're going to start by chaining six, and the six chains is gonna count as the first stitch and the chain three space. So the first three will be the first stitch and the second set of three is the chain three space that's gonna go across these stitches here. So we're gonna go ahead and add three more chains to make our chain six. And then we're gonna skip three like we normally would and work our last our next two stitches in the last double crochet of that first five set and the first double crochet of the next set of five, just as we normally would. And then we continue to repeat that all the way across until we get to the end of our row. So chain three, skip three, two double crochet. Okay, so we made it to our last two stitches on that row, and now we're gonna chain three. And this is going to be a repeat of row two. We're gonna repeat rows two through six. Um, this one is gonna be a little different just because we have that chain six that we're gonna be working into. So I will show you that, but it's basically gonna be written the same as a row two repeat. 
So you'll just be working five double crochet into each chain three space across until you get to that last chain three space. So here we are at the end. We've hit that last chain three space, which again is really a chain six, but the first three counts as our first stitch. So we're going to double crochet four stitches into that chain three space. Here's number four. And then we're gonna work one double crochet into the third chain, since that is the top of our stitch, our first stitch. Okay, so that was our row two repeat, and then you're just gonna to continue to repeat rows three through six, at least that one set. And then if you are making an extra large through five X, don't forget that you'll also have an extra two rows, just as we did on the right side. We want to also include those on the left side so that they're even and you don't know, have one lopsided side. So go ahead and finish off the left hand side of your front panel and I'll meet you back here for seaming. Okay, so we have our panels all done and I've lined up our back panel and our front panel at the shoulder. So you can see here's the other side of my front panel. This is just one half of that upper part. Since we have the V-neck, it's going to have a separate shoulder part. And using the long tail that I left from my front panel, I am going to slide that onto a tapestry needle and then I prefer using the mattress stitch when I seam, but you can use whichever seaming method you prefer. You could even slip stitch these seams together if you'd like on the wrong side. But I have mine with right sides up and I like to just use the mattress stitch. So I'm going from the center out through each stitch, just going back and forth. So I'll go through the first stitch on the back panel and then the first stitch on the front panel. Always from like this inside part of the seam out. And then again, going back to the second stitch, inside to the outside, and I'm just zigzagging back and forth all the way across until each stitch of my front panel has been seamed to each stitch on my back panel. And you will have some undone stitches on the back panel. That's totally fine, that's your neckline and it's where we took out some stitches for that v-neck. So just continue to seam your shoulders all the way across, and you'll do this for both sides. And once those are all seamed together, I will show you how to seam up the sides. Okay, so now that my shoulders are seamed, I've laid my cover up down with wrong sides together, and we wanna measure from the shoulder seams down so that we can leave a spot for our armhole. So since I'm making the extra large, or 2X, I'm gonna leave about nine and a half inches for an armhole. You can do more or less depending on how tightly you want your sleeves to be. And then I'm just going to use a locking stitch marker to join those two edges together so I know where to stop seaming. So then we're just gonna seam all the way down on both sides, we'll do the same thing. So marking nine and a half inches down or however long is indicated for your size. We want to leave from the shoulder seam down that amount for your arms to go through. Okay, so I'm ready to seam my sides. I'm going to use a long piece of yarn and my tapestry needle. And then I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up to that stitch marker. So I'm gonna kind of lay them side by side, similar to how I'm doing, I did the shoulder seams. I'm going to use the mattress stitch again. It's gonna look a little different just because we're gonna be going into the edges of our stitches instead of into the tops. But I'm gonna start on the left side and leave a little bit of a tail here just to weave in when I'm done. But I'm going to be zigzagging back and forth between the two sides, trying to go into the same spot on each side of my seam. So through the front and back panels, we're just zigzagging back and forth, always making sure to come from the center, like the seam line, out um, through the side of the stitch, just like this. 
And again, if you prefer a different seaming method, that's totally fine. It's up to you, whatever look you wanna do. This is just what I prefer. It gives a pretty smooth, even seam um, and is very sturdy. That's why I prefer mattress stitch. So we just continue to zigzag back and forth going through the sides of our stitches. So once you're finished with one side all the way up until that stitch marker where you measured for your armhole, you'll just repeat this process for the second side of your cover up and then we'll be ready to move on to the edging. If you prefer to weave in the ends that you have left at this point before you start the edging, that's fine or you can wait until the very end of your project. It's up to you. Okay, so now that our cover up is fully seamed, we are ready to do the finishing touches, which I prefer to put a single crochet border along the neckline, keeping with that V-neck shape. So I will start at a shoulder seam, work my way down into the V, we'll work a decrease stitch here, then go back up the other side and across the back to join. So I'm just going to grab some of my yarn and I'm gonna stick with my four and a half millimeter hook and we are going to join the yarn at the shoulder seam. So you can do whichever shoulder seam you want, but I prefer to do the left hand side. That way I can go into that V-neck part first and finish up at the back. So I'm gonna join my yarn and chain one and then we're going to single crochet into the same spot that we joined and then we want to single crochet evenly down this edge of our neckline. So this you kind of have to just look and see where the like natural holes are in your stitches and place a single crochet there. The trick is to make sure that you have the same amount of single crochets on the left side as you do the right side. So I would count your stitches as you go. If you see that it's getting kind of wavy, you know you have too many. If you feel like it's pulling, you know you have too few. So I'll give rough estimates in the pattern, in the written pattern, so that you kind of have an idea, but you can kind of see here where I'm placing my single crochets. I'm kind of going maybe twice into some of those bigger holes, but usually just one time into every little space that I see. And I just will make sure that I have the same amount on this side as I do on the other side as well. But we'll just continue to single crochet evenly down until we get to that center stitch where we have that stitch marker, like the very center of our cover up. Okay, so here we've gotten to the center. So we've got our center stitch here and then the two stitches on either side. And for those three stitches, we're going to do a three single crochet together. So I'm gonna insert my hook and draw up a loop in each of those three stitches. I'll have four left on my hook. I'll yarn over and draw through all four. That's gonna be our center stitch of our V and that's gonna allow our V to continue with its shape. So here's a good idea to, this is the right time to check the number of stitches that you made on the left hand side and then repeat the same number going up the front of the right side of our v-neck. And again, just single crochet evenly all the way up. Okay, so we'll just continue working those single crochets, making sure we have an even number on both sides. And then we will work into each stitch all the way across the neckline until we get back to where we started. 
Okay, so we've gotten to the end and we can either slip stitch those two um, stitches together or what I like to do is I like to fasten off there and then I use my tapestry needle to create an invisible join, um, which I can show you now. So I just thread the end of the yarn onto my tapestry needle and then I insert my needle through both loops of that first stitch I made and then down into the center of the last stitch I made. And that will join it together almost invisibly. And then you can just weave in your ends and you'll be done with your neckline. So once you've woven in those ends, we'll be ready to do our armholes. Okay, so we finished up our neckline. It's looking very nice, we're almost done. And now it's time to go around our armholes. So you can see I've already done this one. I've got a nice single crochet row all the way around and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we want to join our yarn in that underarm seam and same as we did for the neckline, we'll just grab our yarn and our hook and we're gonna join and then chain one and single crochet into the same stitch as our join. And again, we're just going to, as evenly as possible, work our single crochet all the way around the armhole. And what you'll wanna do for this side or for this part of it is you want an even or the same amount of single crochet stitches on the back side of the armhole as well as on the front. So I just like to count my stitches as I go and make sure that however many I have when I get to that shoulder seam, I have the same amount from the shoulder seam back down to where I started. But you'll just single crochet all the way around the armhole and then join when you are finished. Okay, so we made it all the way back around. Now all I have to do is weave in all of my ends and we will be pretty much done with our cover up. The last step is gonna be to make the optional belt. So I'm just going to weave in all these ends and I'll meet you back here to show you how I make the belt. Okay, so for our belt, we're just making a simple cord. We'll start with a slip knot on our hook and then to start our cord, we'll need to use our tail. We're gonna wrap it around our hook and then we'll yarn over and we're gonna draw through both those loops on our hook. And then you'll see we have two vertical loops here. We're gonna go through that first one on the right and then yarn over work through both, draw through both loops, and then again, go always going through that first loop, that first vertical loop on the right. We'll go through that loop, yarn over, draw through both loops on the hook. Insert through that first one on the right again. We can get it in there, it can be a little tight and tricky sometimes. Yarn over, draw through two. And we just continue this process the same step over and over until our belt is as long as we need. Usually about two times the circumference of your waist. Then when you're done, you'll simply weave in those ends at the beginning and the end of your cord or belt, and you'll be all set to wear your calliope cover up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, you can find the links to the written pattern in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.